at the Maritime NHLers for Kids Gala and a gala event without the pride of the island, Heather, <laughs> Heather Moyes. Thank you so much for joining us. This is it's incredible. Great to be here. So maybe just discuss life after the Olympics and your, your public speaking. Yeah, well, immediately after the Olympics, it's crazy. I mean, it, be, you become in high demand for speaking events, but it's it's interesting because they, they hire you because of who they've seen on TV. They're just excited to see someone that they've seen on TV come and speak. Um, but I have worked, I mean, I've, I've done so many events and I've actually worked really hard at developing a reputation of being an actual uh, like a good speaker, a legitimate professional speaker. Um, and so I, to me, I'm, I trained just as much for that as I did for my sports. <laughs> and it is a job. It's a job. It's a whole, it's a skill. It's a, you have to learn to refine it. And so I've, um, I've gotten to the point now where I think almost all my events last year were booked based on people who've either heard me speak before or they were referred, you know, I was referred to them by someone who'd heard me speak. So it's really exciting that way that I can, that I know that I'm able to impact people and empower people from you know from a stage and it's it's a pretty cool feeling the transition out of sport is very very difficult did you struggle with that or did you always know that the public speaking was was your no it's hard it, I mean it, it, any kind of transition whether it's out of sport or you know someone who's lost their job or someone who's moving to a new place any kind of transition is difficult for anybody so um, for me, I was fortunate um, to have to have finished my master's degree, you know, before this transition. So I already, I could have gone right to work as an occupational therapist, um, which is a profession I absolutely adore. But to me, what I loved about being an occupational therapist was that I could inspire and empower my client to see their situation in a different perspective and to help them figure out what goals are important to them and go for them. And now I can do that in front of thousands of people or hundreds of people in an audience at a time. And to me, that's, um, that's really exciting. And so the, I didn't go into bobsledding thinking that I wanted a, a professional career in speaking. <laughs> but as soon as you see the impact, and I'm not just talking about from the stage, I'm talking about the, the responses that right. I get after. You know, the emails that I receive about something that they would never have accomplished had they not heard me. Like, that stuff is really, it's emotional for me. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty, oh, what's the word? I don't know. It is emotional. A feeling to know that you have been able to impact someone's life and actually help them for the better. I don't, I can't see myself going, going anywhere else. And now it's just a matter of me figuring out other ways to reach that more people. Well, three years ago, I, I heard you speak. I want to take, take us kind of back. Your training before the Olympics, you decided to stay here. Yes. Why? Um, well, it was between here and Toronto. Right. But I chose not to move to Calgary. That's right. Um, to train with the national team and multi-million dollar push training facility. And that was um, because it, it, I truly believed that I would train better in an environment that was less stressful. Um, so, I mean, there are small p politics in any sport, right. in any, probably in any industry, actually. Um, and, you know, there's there, when I needed to be in an environment where I was reminded on a daily basis that there were things that were more important than sport. Right. Sport is not who I am. It just happens to be something that I do really well. And I wanted to be just reminded of I just wanted to keep things in perspective and training without, um, I don't know, without the, the, the pressure of maybe other teammates not getting along and you kind of feeling like you're walking on eggshells trying not to disrupt anything and, um, and also the intensity. My training was very different than anybody else's and I knew my training needed to be different because I am a different person and I, I wanted, you know, to do that without judgment, without people kind of over without seeing that and, and it's I was okay with the idea of not making the team if I wasn't good enough if I trained on my own and I didn't make it I was okay with that because I was still had I still had made the decision that I thought was the best for me in order to perform at my best the training all the time that goes into that for one or two runs how much pressure and stress 
how do you deal with that at, at that level at that time? Well, you know, when I'm speaking to people, I talk a lot about perspective, and it's how you look at things. And I've actually just written a book. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. I don't know if that's coming out yet or not, but anyway, probably October. <laughs> um, but I talk about um, the, the, you can work so hard towards something and then at the big event not perform very well. And sometimes it has to do with overinflating the importance of an event. And it's, um, I downplayed the Olympics. Like I just, down, I was just like, it's just another race. So for me, it was literally about what do I need to do and how do I need to um, take away pressure in order to be able to execute the way I've always been executing up until that moment. So it's, um, you just, for me though, I wasn't training for, I wasn't training because I wanted to be an Olympic champion, like, which sounds so crazy, but <laughs> it does sound crazy. However, um, for me, it was always about the challenge. So you pick, you, you set a challenge, you set a goal you, that's ho really high and that, and that seems, I mean, for the last Olympics, I was recovering from hip surgery. Everyone totally wrote me off. Right. And then when I came back, for me, it was, yeah, okay, I might not make it. But I also, there was a possibility that I could. And so for me, it's about setting the goal and, and there are no guarantees in anything. Right. And so if you set the goal, wherever you set it, it's just about that challenge of seeing how close you can get. It's not about necessarily achieving it, it's seeing how close you can get to a really unlikely goal. And then you test your limits, and then that's when you see what your true potential is, and that's when you figure out what you're actually capable of accomplishing. If you just set small goals where everything's guaranteed, no magic happens there, and you probably don't get very far. But if you set goals and you, I, I just, for me, it's all about the challenge, and the gold medals just happen to be a byproduct of me pursuing a challenge that I was really into. When you step up on the podium, who, who did you think about the most? Oh, it wasn't even about thinking about... <sighs> You're gonna get me here. It was easy, it, didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't that I had to start thinking about who was there. My family was right there in the very front, um, sort of off to the side this way in Vancouver and on this side for Sochi, but they were all wearing these bright red and white top hats, like with, you know, they just, they made it very easily to see where they were. And that was the same as in the crowd when we raced and also for the medals. So as soon as I, s <laughs> oh, you're going to get me on this one. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's a, I don't know. I, I guess them. How, how does it f feel to share that with, with a teammate? You reach that together. Yeah, I mean, it's when you're when you work with somebody else. It's kind of the same reason why I thought about my family because right. they, besides my teammates, they are the only ones who really know everything. Right. Every ups, like well, most people would have seen the ups, but not very many people are privy to the downs in that whole cycle. And I mean, your teammate is aware of maybe most of them but in a different degree so she so to accomplish something like that you you know what each other has gone through and what each other has struggled through in order to accomplish something together and that's it's a pretty powerful feeling it's the same it's a little more intimate i would say than a than a big team sport but still a big team sport would understand the value of what the team has gone through to get there when you're just with two people it's more than that it's it's things that have happened within your families, things that have happened, you know, in relationships, things that have happened and like, it, you, you know everything that's happened, good or bad, on the route to accomplishing something that meaningful together. So it's, it's a pretty crazy feeling. How meaningful is uh, this being, for you, being a part of the, the Maritime NHLers for Kids event and giving back? Oh, I think it's great. Well, I, I think the best part about um, having won two Olympic gold medals is it affords me a platform to not only empower other people, but, but to give back. And whether it's me giving back my time for certain things or whether it's me lending my voice to certain things, because for whatever reason, these two medals give me <laughs> some credibility, I guess. Um, but I love it. Like, we've come from a phenomenal place, not only here in PEI, but, the, but in the Maritimes and the Atlantic provinces. And it's um, a corner of the country that 
kind of, I don't want to say it's secret, but it's, it's not really, people don't, people know it's there, but they don't know what they're missing by not being here, and they don't know what we have. And I think we as islanders and as maritimers, we know what we have. At least if people have gone and, and come back, we definitely know what we have here, and we know how amazing the support is. And so the support that I received growing up, this is just a way to give back. Wow. It's incredible uh, to have you know, an Olympic champion in our midst here uh, with the Maritime NHLers for Kids, but your impact after sport is truly tremendous. Thank you so Thank much, you. Heather. Thank you.